Hi, welcome to another one of our Wednesday night writing workshops. I'm Jeremy Dobert with the uh, Aurora University Academic Support Center. And as always, I just wanna say, you know, thank you all for coming out on a Wednesday night and, and really thank you for having me. I hope you all are doing well. I know this is kind of a part of the semester where things start to get intense, start to kind of pile on. And I'm so, you know, I, thank you for coming out. Um, before I forget, we are video recording. That was our three, two, one at the beginning. And I tell you that in part, just so you know that all the stuff we do today, all the stuff we talk about, it's there for you if like five days from now, anything we talked about starts to feel a little blurry. And part of what's there, if you Google uh, Aurora University Academic Support Center YouTube, you'll find videos on everything from like how to do APA, uh, how to build introductions, how to build conclusions, just a whole lot of stuff there. You could essentially spend like a weekend taking a little mini college course um, you know, through YouTube. The thing we're gonna be talking about today is building effective body paragraphs, this time with some extra stuff um, more particular to research. I wanna say at the beginning, I'm excited to be talking about this because I remember when I was in college, it was just one class where a professor took us aside for about like 20 minutes or so and said, okay, here's how you build a body paragraph. And it was maybe the most useful 20 minutes of my college career because on the one hand, no one has ever, had ever done that before. Had ever shown me, here's how you do it. Here's how the parts work. And the kind of formulas that, and, that I saw there are the things that kind of saw me through all the many research essays I had as an English major when I was in college, and then all of the you know, lengthening essays I had uh, in grad school. Here's the general idea. Here's the goal of the day. What these models do, these ways of approaching building a body paragraph, is they make it so that instead of having to constantly reorient yourself in the essay, constantly trying to figure out, okay, what's the next thing that comes? What do I have to do next? These models make it so it's a little more like a set of train tracks. We're gonna, okay, this is the next thing I gotta do. This is the thing after that. This is the thing after that. And ultimately what that does is make it so that writing the essay is a little more about just thinking aloud, getting your thoughts down on the paper instead of having to also constantly be trying to kind of reorient, uh, reorient yourself. All right. Uh, we'll be looking at, let me pull it up right now. We'll be looking at this throughout and I want you to know everything here will at the very end of the workshop put it in the chat so everything you see today you have it it's there for it to be immediately useful to you all. A quick note on that if you have a quick minute right now I want to ask you to pull up an essay on your computer whether that's something you're currently working on something you just turned in that way after we do some talking we can try out applying some of these models right away make it all immediately applicable for you you know right now right now. Other quick things I, I just wanna ask before we get started. If you can, please keep the video on. I won't put you on the spot. I will just ask you to give me a quick scale of one to five with your fingers. Five, totally with you. One, pretty darn murky. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat at a couple stopping points. I'll try to kind of um, answer a few of those. As well, at the very, very end, we'll have a kind of more formal question answer. All right, that's all the intro stuff. Here we go. So this is the first model we're gonna to look to, and this is like the foundational model for building body paragraphs. When I uh, would teach students how to write essays for the SAT or the ACT, where it's timed and you're exhausted, this is the thing we'd look to because it's a great way to get a lot of information on the page really fast. Here's the different parts and how they work. First, topic sentence. All right, here's the big thing, the main idea I'm gonna talk about in this paragraph, and we put it literally explicitly on the page at the beginning. Second, here's the evidence. All right, here's my big idea. Here's the ex evidence, the example, the data, the information that I think proves my topic. And last, here's me writing out on the page. Here's how I think that evidence proves my topic. I'm gonna talk a little more about each one of those individually, make that a little less abstract, a little more concrete. All right, let's start with topic sentences. Um, topic sentences are super tempting to just skip. I feel it all the time in my own writing to just go right into the good stuff, right into the thing I'm thinking about, right into the evidence. But if you watch or listen to people who make arguments for a living, like lawyers and politicians, lawyers and politicians love topic sentences. Part of like, imagine for, to really see that, imagine like a lawyer going into a, a courtroom 
and just starting right with the evidence. No, my client is innocent because yada, yada. Just here's all the pieces of evidence. It's a great way to lose the jury because what the jury is having to do then is trace out like, okay, I'm trying to put all this evidence together. I'm trying to remember it. And by doing it, they're forgetting stuff. They're making wrong connections. They're kind of almost putting together one of those like conspiracy board things you see in the movies. So lawyers always start with, okay, here's almost the box to put all the evidence in so you don't have to guess. Here's how what all the evidence is gonna connect to right at the top. Second move, here's the evidence. I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on this except to say, um, if you're in the sciences, you know, putting together a lot of studies, this is where all the data from those studies go. So here's the big topic, uh, hand washing, you know, is, can save lives in hospitals. Here's all the evidence that supports that one topic. If you're doing, let's say a research report, um, this is where all the information examples go um, right here in our evidence. So our topic, um, Roman Catholicism um, has a significant impact on the healthcare in Italy. Here's all the evidence from the source that support that. Last, if you're doing a literary analysis, which is you're writing about a book, like, you know, um, about, let's say, The Lone Ranger and Tonto Fistfight in Heaven by Sherman Alexie, here's where all the quotes, all the paraphrases go that are, that are point to, like, um, what you think the author is saying or what you think the author means. So, all right, topic, evidence. Last part is the reasoning. This is the way that I want to pitch the reasoning. Give me a quick thumbs up if this has happened to you. Ever see a movie with some friends and come away from that movie with like totally different experiences in that friend group, totally different interpretations. Thumbs up, maybe thumbs down. Give me a thumbs up I'm with you. The same thing can happen with evidence. No matter how straightforward, self-apparent you think the evidence is, no matter how clear you think the quote is, we can... As humans, we're just built to always add our own interpretation. So this is the part in the research essay where we say, okay, you can't interpret the evidence in your, in your own way. Here's how I interpret the evidence. Here's what I see in it. And here's how I think it proves my point. So it's, here's my big idea. Here's the supporting evidence. Here's me saying how I see that evidence proven my main point. All right, let's take a really quick break. Or let's first do a quick scale of one to five. Five, totally with you. One, pretty murky. How are you feeling right now? Hey, all right. I'm seeing a lot of fives. Um, any quick questions? I want to do one more model before we take more of a step back. But if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, right now. Can you see the chat, Ashley? I can't with also this up. Yeah, any questions? No, all right, we're good. All right, foundational model. We're going to add some stuff to it. And I'm gonna present this kind of the way that the professor way back when first presented it to me, which is, it was one of those beautiful autumn days in Galesburg, Illinois. And he walked in as the bell rang and said, I'm gonna, about to teach you the most important thing you'll learn all semester. And he wrote in the board in big block letters, Oprah. Let me check in, is this a dated reference? How, you, how many of y'all have seen Oprah? How many of y'all, um, maybe, <laughs> I got a really good thumbs up there. All right, if you haven't seen Oprah, Ellen, uh, Ellen does the same thing. Basically, anyone that interviews people on the daytime, they use the same kind of model and they're building really good body paragraphs every day on their show. This is how they build body paragraphs. First, they say, here's the segment of our show. Here's what it's about. We're gonna talk about bullying and just how much that affects people's self-esteem. That's a great topic sentence. The next thing Oprah does though, is the guest doesn't just walk out, right? Or you know, onto the show, right? Oprah says, here's the big idea. We're gonna be talking about bullying and she introduces the guest. My guest so-and-so studies bullying at Harvard University and he's actually saying that bullying is getting worse now that it's moved online. Those two moves we can really steal in our own essays. Here's the topic, here's my big idea. Here's how the guest, the evidence is related to that topic. I really quickly wanna just read these two moves out loud. So the first part up here, welcome back. This is me trying to kind of do a, you know, uh, a slight impression of Oprah. And then down here, you're gonna see it's the exact same moves, the exact same sentence, basically. The only thing that's changed is the you know transitions and the wording to be a little less talky, a little more formal. So take a quick listen. Welcome back. We've talked a lot about bullying on the show, how unfortunately common it is, how much it can affect someone and how long lasting some of those effects can be. But is it getting worse? All right, here's the same thing, but in a research essay. To summarize, 
The research clearly demonstrates that bullying is unfortunately commonplace and its effects can be deep and long lasting. Moreover, the prevalence of bullying may be increasing. So the, almost the same wording, just introducing a segment on a show versus um, you know, introducing a topic on a research. Here's the same move now, first introducing a guest, how you could do it in research uh, on, on, on the show. Today, we have a special guest, Dr. Jones, who says that bullying might actually be getting worse because it's moved online. Dr. Jones, what do you have to say about the lives of these young people? Here's how we do it in research. And really kind of cue in, how could you do this in your own essays? According to Jones, the prevalence and degree of bullying actually worsens when bullying itself moves into online spaces. Jones at times paints a pretty bleak picture of young people's experience. So after the guest talks, we cite the guest, we quote the guest, we paraphrase the guest. Just like on Oprah, the, after the guest talks, we don't just cut the commercial, right? It'd feel awkward to be like, okay, the guest finished talking and now we're done. Oprah outros the guest just like she intros them. Um, here's what that might sound like on the show. Thank you so much. That was Dr. Jens, whose new book shows all the way in which young people really are facing additional challenges with online bullying on the rise. I'm jumping down to the bottom of the page. Here's how we could do it in a research essay. In other words, these findings clearly highlight the variety of ways in which young people face additional challenges when bullying follows them online. The big pitch I'm, I'm pointing to here, uh, the Oprah model is here's the topic, here's how the evidence, the guest is uh, connected to that topic, a little intro for the guest, this talks, we outro the guest, here's what I see it saying, basically almost re-summarizing, re-paraphrasing what that evidence said. And then at the very end, just like we talked about, we go back to the topic. So it's topic, intro, evidence, evidence, outro, evidence, topic. All right. And here's what that looks like in more uh, academic terms. You'll sometimes hear people talk about that last part showing how the evidence is connected back to the topic as synthesis. All right, another quick check-in. We added some more stuff, scale of one to five. I need some water too. All right, I'm seeing some fives. Okay, for those of you just coming in, if you don't mind keeping the cameras on, that way I can just check in um, if you're able to keep the camera on. All right, once you get this model down, you can do two other things. First other thing is this, uh, do it with a whole lot of guests, a whole lot of different sources from different places. If essentially, if we cycle through that two, three, four, introduce one guest, here's the evidence, outro the guest, introduce new guest, new evidence, outro a guest. So this is one of those ways for if you have one body paragraph that's again, like let's say the effects of um, uh, Roman Catholicism on healthcare in Italy, if a lot of different sources, getting really good at that introing, outroing guests makes it so that instead of a lot of disconnected quotes and facts, everything is super connected and really straightforward. Here's a concrete model of what that might look like. So let's say I'm writing an essay about how I like Bill Murray, and this paragraph's about how Bill Murray um, does some wild antics you know, out in real life, not just in his movies. So at the beginning, topic sentence, Bill Murray is doing, uh, creating comedic moments out in the real world. And here I got one, two, three sources by Fitzgerald, Hecht, and Scott. Here's what it looks like with introing and outroing. I'm starting at the, for example, all right, so Bill Murray doing crazy stuff out in the real world. For example, Fitzgerald describes a bizarre run-in at a frat house. Da, 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 da. We introduce Fitzgerald going, going right into that evidence, what he has to say. Now let's outro him. Well, Fitzgerald's description of a mild man of a mild-mannered Bill Murray crashing a frat party is pretty hilarious. This certainly isn't an isolated incident for Bill Murray. Hecht similarly recalls a night in which he was surprised to find Murray pretending to be a bartender. All right, let's intro Hecht after we get the evidence from him. A pattern quickly emerges in both Hecht and Fitzgerald's stories. Bill Murray shows up to a place that he hasn't exactly been invited to and pretends that he's not Bill Murray. Moreover, Scott's article details a whole list of incidences in which Murray momentarily joins someone else's ongoing event. Scott writes, yada, yada. So again, without those introing and, out, introing and outroing of evidence, this would be kind of clustered and a little chaotic. That introing and outroing really nicely organizes a whole lot of sources all in one place. Last I wanna show you, this is at the bottom of the page. So, okay, we said, here's all the sources. Here's, for example, what a, synthesis might look like. 
Again, outdrawing all of them together, saying, here's the big picture of what all those things look like when you put them together. I'm starting at the end in each of these bizarre scenes. In each of these bizarre scenes, Bill Murray seems to be blurring the line between comedy and the real world. Whether he's quietly doing the dishes in a frat house during a party, pretending to be a bartender, or joining an amateur soccer game mid-play. There's our rephrasing, our synthesis, all the sources at once. Here now we're gonna tie back to the thesis. His pranks aren't really pranks at all. No one gets fooled, no one's misled. The surprise is just that he's Bill Murray hanging out in the real world for a while. So we pulled back against that topic of him doing crazy wild stuff in the real world. All right, that's the first thing we can do with the Oprah model. Bring a lot of different sources from a lot of different places into the same paragraph and have it be neatly organized and pretty straightforward. Uh, here's, oh, I also, and again, I will send all of this um, in the chat at the very end of today, but here's a whole list of transition words that can help in general, but can also especially help when you're trying to fit different sources, transfer and intros and outros of different sources in one paragraph. So a whole lot of well-organized uh, transition words for you, you know, as you're, you're heading out later today. So we can take a lot of different sources, put them into one paragraph, or we can take a lot of information from one source and put it into one paragraph. So we're talking about evidence from one source over multiple sentences for kind of a while. And I just wanna show you, here's the general kind of formatting for how to do that, because it is tricky and not super intuitive. So the beginning and end, same as before, topic, uh, interpretation, synthesis of information. But here's what we're doing in the middle. First, if you're citing a whole lot of information from one source, it's even more important to signal at the very beginning um, where this is coming from, like to intro that guest. So in fact, according to Sherry Turkle, yada, yada. The reason is even more important is we're trying to avoid this. In this first example, literary consists of both reading and writing. The writing might take the form of marketing up a text or making notes about it. In this, only the second sentence is technically cited. It is not clear that the first sentence also is coming from the same source. And so this is like putting us in, you know, the terrifying realm of, you know, not source not attributed, possibly plagiarized. Which is why we're, if we're doing lots of information from one source, even more important is for us to do that introing of the guest. Here's our guest, Sherry Turkle. Um, let's do a pretend topic sentence. So technology might be damaging our ability to concentrate. In fact, according to Sherry Turkle, the different ways that we use our smartphones may be damaging kind of, you know, the different ways we think about a whole lot of stuff. So after we do that big intro for Sherry Turkle, now we just need to do kind of little mini intros. What each of those little mini intros do at the beginning of each sentence is say, okay, we're still tracking the source. All this information is still coming from the same source so that it's super clear by the end that from here to here, from our intro, according to Sherry Turkle, all the way to that citation, all of this is from Sherry Turkle. So it's a big intro, then lots of tiny mini intros to show all that middle stuff comes from one source. And again, the Oprah model here, super useful because without the topic sentence and the big picture, here's what all that information says, here's how it's connected to the topic, you'd have a paragraph that's basically all cited from a source, all evidence. So that Oprah model here, doing a whole lot of information from one source, really again, you know, sets it up to have these paragraphs uh, work and all, all fit together. Okay, let me double check. Last thing, again, a little mini thesaurus for you, a whole bunch of synonyms for the verb says. This will be in the chat at the very end. Um, this can help when you're setting up these moves. So instead of Turkle says, Turkle says, Turkle says, you have a whole here, little mini thesaurus of um, you know, different ways to, to word that, create the verbiage. I think that is the end of, yep. Yeah. All right, scale of one to five, any questions, feel free to put them in that chat, cool. Got a couple fives, let me check in. All right, if anything is like super making sense to you in a particular way, feel free to also put that in the chat. Like, oh, this may, this thing makes sense. I wanna take a quick second here because we're gonna, we just saw these, the Oprah model, how it works in a couple different ways. Now we're gonna, we're gonna shift gears just slightly. All right, any questions in the chat, Ashley or? No, okay, we're good. So we looked at, okay, now we have it so that instead of trying to reorient ourselves in the paragraph all the time, like, you know, navigating a boat by the stars at night, we have our set of train tracks. Here's what each thing, what 
always the next part of the paragraph is, here's some stuff for if you get stuck in one of those parts. Um, first, let's say you get stuck trying to write a topic sentence. This is one of my favorite magic tricks to do with you all uh, when we're in one-on-one -on -one sessions. Really literally write out, in this paragraph, I'm gonna talk about how blank. If you try to do it at home, you have to remember the how. It's the most important part, the part that does a magic trick. But let's, for example, this is one that I, we actually did with me and a student. In this paragraph, I'm gonna talk about how plastic straws can cause significant damage to the environment. That's a pretty good start for a topic sentence. Plastic straws can cause a significant damage to the environment. So we start off with, in this paragraph, I'm gonna talk about how, fill in the blank, and then get rid of, in this paragraph, I'm gonna talk about how. And it'll often get you at least a pretty good start for like, okay, if I add a little more to this, I think we could add a little more to, plastic straws can cause significant damage to the environment, um, but we can add more detail, but this move in this paragraph, I'm gonna talk about how it usually gets that kind of first foothold. Get stuck doing those introductions, introducing the evidence, introducing the guest uh, on the essay that is your show. Here's a couple ways that can help. First, again, like we said, imagine it's your TV show. So um, how would you introduce this guest, this piece of evidence to your audience at home? Another way, kind of similar, um, imagine you're introducing this source to a friend who's just not in your class. Like what small one sentence thing would they need to know in order to kind of be like, okay, now I, I get it. Now I can go into this evidence, understanding a little bit about what this book is about. Or try, you know, the tried and true, the author argues that blank. In all of these, the last thing I wanna say with introducing evidence, um, it's essentially like trying to in one sentence give a quick preview for the movie. So it really is just one sentence. Um, Sherry Turkle argues that technology is damaging our ability to connect with each other. If you get stuck interpreting the evidence, this is some paint by numbers that can really help. So we got our evidence, now we're interpreting it. Um, try out, in other words, blank. This means blank, this shows blank. And again, I'll send all this to you in the chat at the end. Um, here's the kind of pro move. So this shows yada yada, let's do two. Um, this shows that hand washing is really effective at saving lives. Um, this shows that the character Junior um, is being discriminated at Reardon. Two kind of pro moves, you don't have to do this, but it'll make the writing even stronger, even punchier, even more academic sounding, is to see if you can take out the this and the shows. So what shows that hand washing is effective at saving lives? Is it those studies? Is it research? Is it the you know, peer reviewed, um, a, a few peer reviewed studies? Let's pull one of those in. So instead of this shows that hand washing is effective, the research clearly demonstrates that hand washing is effective. We took out the this, we took out the shows, we got something a little stronger, a little punchier. Um, let's go back to our second example. This all shows that Junior is being um, discriminated against at Reardon. Well, what shows that? Is it like his experiences? Is it what people, the way people are describing him? Is it, um, I don't know, the like, what, maybe it's, a, maybe it's just the story, the story shows. Let's see if we can pull any of those in. So Junior's experiences at Reardon, um, you know, clearly reveal that he's being discriminated against. Again, a last little mini thesaurus, a whole lot of verb, a whole lot of synonyms for the word shows that hit different kind of marks. So demonstrates or illustrates, highlights signals, a whole lot. This is probably, you know, the most I'm throwing at you. And the, the, the last thing I wanna say here, if you, if you get stuck with any of these moves or if you just want some more practice, really feel free, uh, feel encouraged to book an appointment with us at the Academic Support Center. We can help out with any of these moves, make them more comfortable um, and even kind of help kind of Format the paragraphs as you want them. Last check-in, scale of one to five. Any questions, anything super making sense, feel free. Fives, all right. I'm gonna check in down the line. Okay. Um, this is, so the paint by numbers. Um, this is an example of putting it all together, how it can work. The main thing I'm gonna talk about in this paragraph is how plastic straws are bad for the environment. I'm just gonna read for you the bullet points I got from using this paint by numbers. Plastic straws are bad for the environment. Plastic straws are often thrown away after one use. We have to make a lot of them. Um, we're thrown plastic away. Thrown plastic away creates unnecessary waste. So just by using the in other words, and the this means the main thing I'm gonna talk about, I got all my points. If I put them together in a paragraph with a couple transitions, which we looked at earlier, 
Plastic straws are bad for the environment. Two, in part, because they are typically thrown away after one use. As a result, we have, a lot, we have to make a lot of plastic straws because they're constantly being replaced, which ultimately means more plastic is being thrown away. Consequently, throwing away all that plastic creates unnecessary and significant waste. Topic, evidence, here's how I think my evidence proves my main point. And it's, it's really using that paint by numbers made it so I could just think out loud a little more on the page. All right, we are closing towards the end. Um, this is one last application. You don't have to be able to read it. I just wanted to give you the visual. This is how I used to write my essays um, when I was in college. And this is an exercise I've used with a few students where you literally put down on, a, on, on the Word document, all the quotes, all the paraphrases, all just the pieces of evidence, more or less in the order you think they're gonna show up in your essay, doesn't have to be right on. But if you do that, two things will kind of happen naturally. One, if you start putting all the quotes you think you're gonna use in the order you think you're gonna use them, you start to brainstorm and outline and draw connections in the essay without even having to write. So by the time you're even just starting, you have a, a whole lot of you know, idea work done um, going in. The second thing this does is it makes it so that instead of it being a terrifying you know, blank white page of the Word document, it's a whole lot of stuff. And you know, all right, I know my moves. I gotta introduce my topic, introduce this quote, here's my quote. Da, 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 da. It's visually even that kind of set of train tracks um, that can just help a whole lot for setting up an essay. Um, this last model is the trickiest. Um, it's the hardest to do, but also you know the one that sounds the coolest. The middle parts are all the stuff we were talking about before: introducing topic, evidence, analyzing evidence, and then how the, we think the evidence proves our topic. Really what we're adding are two things. At the beginning, instead of just jumping into here's the main topic, we're adding a quick extra thing. Here's how the topic is related to the last stuff I was talking about in my essay. At the very end, we're adding another thing. So instead of being like, okay, topic, evidence, here's how I think my evidence proves my topic. Now we jump one back here's how my topic relates to my overall argument, my thesis. In other words, now that I've added this topic to the essay, here's how my overall argument has changed a little. I know that's a little abstract. Let's look um, at the Bill Murray example. So the last paragraph in this essay, let's say was about just Bill Murray's uh, deadpan delivery in his movies. Here's how we can set that up, connect it, our new topic to the old one. Well, Bill Murray first became famous for his idiosyncratic uh, comedy on screen. Oh, I messed, I messed this up. T let's take out the butt. Um, well, Bill Murray first became famous for his idiosyncratic deadpan comedy on, on screen. In recent years, he's been creating comedic moments in the real world, for example, yada, yada. So we're just connecting what the last paragraph was about to this new topic. If, let's do the last part, all right. So our topic in this paragraph is that he's doing weird stuff out in the real world. Um, that's the sentence that starts the surprise. The surprise is just that Bill Murray's hanging out with you in the real world for a while. Let's connect it back to the whole overall argument that I like Bill Murray and you know, think he's an uh, American legend for good reason. Uh, Murray, Murray's antics, in addition to his culture-defining films, have firmly established him as something of an American legend. So this last model, what we're doing again, we're only adding a quick thing in the beginning. Here's, some, here's how this paragraph is connected to the last paragraph. And at the end, here's how this paragraph is connected back to the overall thesis. If you are comfortable with the Oprah model, the Oprah model will you know, do its work, it'll get it done. If you start trying that out and wanna add something even more, see if you can add these last two things, um, how this body paragraph connects back, how it hitches to the last paragraph, how it then connects back to the overall big themes, big thesis of the essay. All right, that's the show. Um, for those of you, of you at YouTube, thank you for tuning in. And this was a Wednesday writing workshop uh, with the Aurora Academic Support Center. For those of you still here, um, we can jump, do some question answer stuff. We can also, if any of you have some essays out and wanna try out modeling one of these topic uh, sentences to an essay you have or are working on, wanna to try to model out doing some of that reasoning or introducing a quote, we can do some of that too um, in kind of our last uh, 15 or so minutes. So Ashley, are we okay not recording anymore?